Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green, September 13th, 2021. Welcome to all of you, and we're going to learn some really good energy efficiency and passive design stuff today. You know, all the world views Hawaii as a paradise for obvious reasons. We energy geeks, I think, look at Hawaii as another type of paradise. Namely, we are blessed with this beautiful climate. And if we're able to harvest the benefits of that beautiful climate, we are achieving health, comfort, and not just efficiency, super, super efficiency. And we're going to have that illustrated by our two distinguished guests today. Purnima McCutcheon is the Senior Designer and Manager for FSC Architects, and Kevin Luona is the Vice President for WSP Engineers. And Purnima's design of this restaurant, which he's going to describe, is one of the best examples of taking advantage of Hawaii's climate that I know of at almost zero energy cost. So, Pranima McCutcheon, please take it away. Uh, Howard, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, yes, I am a senior designer and project manager with FSC Architects. I was definitely not uh, you know, alone in this uh, process. So maybe I should first start out by thanking the entire team. So. Uh, first of all, uh, we had a, a wonderful client uh, who desired a sustainable and culturally appropriate design. So, uh, you know, great to first start with that, uh, which is Kana Pali Beach Hotel. Uh, and then our uh, internal design team, I have to say that actually the primary designers are Jim Freeman, uh, David Gaahaina, and Joe Hameter. Uh, and they, they kind of took the project through the inception and then Katie Burke, Ernesto Agaluz and myself, we took it to the finish line. Um, and well, creative, um, I mean, uh, designing or creating a sustainable, sustainable project uh, is uh, definitely a collaborative process. And so we, we have to thank our consultants, including Kevin here. So WSP were our uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing and lighting engineers, fire protection engineers, and then BASE uh, was our structural engineer, civil engineers, uh, Fukumoto engineering, uh, Phil Potts interior designers, and then our landscape consultants um, were uh, PBR. Um, maybe I should ask for the first slide so you can see my the project so uh yeah so this is a image of this is one of my favorite images of the slide uh, of the uh, project uh, and it shows you uh, etched glass sails uh, and i'll talk it's these are sunlit and um, it kind of gives you a first impression of the project and i'll talk about it in, in a little bit more uh, a little bit later so uh, i think let's go to the second um slide uh, so this is the site plan. And as you can see in this slide, uh, the restaurant is in the center of the of a large courtyard, uh, just steps away from the from the ocean, and it's surrounded by guest wings, which uh, some of which we've also been working on as part of this phase one of the project. Um, so while the end product looks fairly simple, uh, a lot of uh, consideration goes into uh, things such as siting the project, location, the orientation, the shape, uh, proportions. Um, and uh, I mean, you, you have to take into consideration what the programmatic requirements from the client are, um, and then match that with, um, you know, the code requirements, and then match that with, um, you know, what um, sustainability requirements as well. Uh, and as you know, uh, uh, views are very, very important in, in a hotel. So we have to kind of manage all of this. Um, so I, I guess uh, I just wanted to point out that, you know, the, the image uh, like that just showed you the restaurant, instead of being designed like a contained uh, box, it also has these arms, which allow for a lot more air movement and views. Um, maybe we can go to the next slide. Uh, so this is the entry uh, 
to the restaurant from the courtyard side. Um, the idea, of the, one of the concepts behind this building is that it is a house without walls. It is inspired by Kauhali, which, is, uh, which means a Hawaiian village. And as such, it sits nicely within a larger complex of gardens and courtyards. And the idea is that it is um, you know, welcoming, but not overwhelming. Um, and you can see how transparent the project, uh, the building is. I don't know if you can see the lighting, but the lighting was also inspired by the night sky. Uh, you can see the shaded trees, and I'm going to talk about the trees a little bit later. And you can't, uh, unfortunately, smell the fragrance, but it's also lined with native Hawaiian uh, jasmine as you walk in. We can go to the next slide. All right, so hui hui means um, to join. Uh, to intermingle and to mix. And so here you can see this is the outdoor dining. So th this is uh, the, so you, what you just saw before this was the courtyard entry. So this is now the Mackay side view of the project. And uh, as you can see, it invites um, people to intermingle. You can also note that, um, you know, the, the restaurant has no walls, uh, no walls in the perimeter, no glazing or, you know, very, very minimal walls on the rear side or the deep end of it. Um, so it's situated very carefully so that it's, uh, it kind of can harvest uh, the natural cool breeze coming in from the ocean. Um, it was a it was a pretty big decision to go with no air conditioning, as you know Kevin likes to say. You know, if if you have uh, no air conditioning, then um, you know it, it, it's basically a sustainable project. The best way to okay, I'm going to quote him exactly. The best way to save energy is to not use any. We like that quote. Yes, that's the best way to save energy. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. ultimate prevention is better than pound a cure. That's the that's the motto right there. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So Hui Hui also means a star constellation. So while Hui Hui's primary function is that of a, a restaurant, it also is meant to serve as an inherent part of the resort's sailing academy and pool Kela program, which Kana Pali Beach Hotel is, is quite well known for. And so um, it is a modern interpretation of traditional Hawaiian uh, influences and it aids in telling the story of voyaging. So as you can see on the bottom um, image, uh, you know, we have this wall that the artwork is, in, uh, is um, inspired by um, Herb Cain's um, uh, uh, painting. And then you also see an inset uh, TV. And so the TV is supposed to display content that's relevant to the Sailing Academy. In the top left image, you'll sort of notice uh, some um, sail, traditional sail knots uh, as part of the banquet seating. And so that was actually done by the, the hotel staff. And again, it harks upon the, the story of navigation. Mm, let's see, um, there's other elements which we haven't had we haven't shown out here, but we have, uh, you know, flora and fauna integrated into the wall covering and uh, and the lighting and um, for another time. <laughs> All right, so I think we can go to the next slide. And Pranima, your lighting, I presume, is all probably uh, low Kelvin uh, LEDs. <laughs> yeah. So so okay. starts the the lighting. Yeah, it's all LED throughout the entire uh, entire building, and then also we have dimming controls so we can adjust the settings so during the day we set it to be dim so you, there's still some ambient light there just so there's not dark spots throughout but it's not going you don't have to have it at full uh, lighting levels and at nighttime then you increase it to what's necessary so we saved energy by having the efficient led lighting plus we also had the dimming capabilities with pretty much every light in the facility and advanced controls so you can save energy during the day when not as much light is needed, but still a little bit is required. Yeah, yeah a highly sophisticated system. All right, going to the next slide. So in this slide, uh, you know, we're showing some floor plans to give a little bit more context. Um, the, the, our client early on, uh, I guess in the 
um, early stages design was decided that the project wouldn't go in for LEED certification, but they did want to pursue high sustainability goals. Uh, so from the very beginning, you know, multiple measures have been incorporated into the design to minimize the use of fossil fuel and reduce have lower energy use, et cetera. So we can help Hawaii reach the 2045 clean energy, uh, energy initiative, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, so the design program actually includes a lot of uh, MEP space. Uh, it also includes a canoe holiday where they could store canoes or house canoes. Um, it includes a pool bar because it's right um, in front of, uh, right behind the restaurant complex is a, a swimming pool. Um, and so we wanted to service, uh, you know, people using the, the swimming pool. And um, then again, it has, um, upstairs it has the restaurant, which has um, outdoor dining, indoor dining, bar, lounge, uh, private dining room, and, and of course the kitchen and the bathrooms, there are bathrooms on both floors. So um, our proposal was to take advantage of the site's slope, and hence we tucked the canoe hale and the MEP and the pool grill kitchen on the lower level, uh, which made quite a good sense because the, um, uh, it's, you know, I, I don't know if it's easy for you to see, but uh, you can see the tail of the whale tail swimming pool. Uh, so that's where the uh, grill could successfully um, service the, the clients from the pool side. Um, and then have the remaining functions elevated off the ground. And so what this allows us to do is uh, allowed airflow below the building, allows cooling of the slab and overall cooling of the building. It also allowed us to take advantage of, um, you know, uh, on the front, on the Mackay side, uh, provided great views um, by allowing us to again descend down from that elevated height. So every patron gets a nice view. I mean, that was one of the concepts. Um, let's see. Um, I think I should point out that the roof was deliberately light colored, which uh, helps reflecting heat without creating a glare. And then the um, dark color palette beneath the eaves also helps reduce ocean glare. Um, I think. I can move to the next slide and maybe that's when you'll see a little bit more. Yeah, Pranima, I'm looking at those overhangs. I love those overhangs. The temperature difference sometimes on a hot day between a shaded area and an unshaded area can be as high as 40 degrees, 40 degrees. Right, and I, I think, uh, well, I, I Katie in our office has termed it like a wide brimmed hat. We have seven foot high, seven foot long eaves. It's very generous. So it allows us to cut down the solar heat gain and it minimizes glare. And it also like, actually it also creates a nice sense of enclosure. Um, you know, it, it makes it sort of nice and cozy in, in when you're sitting inside. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, I mean, if you want to keep that uh, slide up, we can talk about a couple more things in there. Um, so uh, th some of these images are from during the construction uh, phase. So you'll see um, that we don't have any columns in the corner and we have um, no perimeter walls. Uh, you can see the ceiling fans. Um, did you want to talk about the ceiling fans, Kevin? I'll talk about it later. I'm okay. showing the CFD modeling that we have, but yeah. That it's good to see good. actual okay. picture of them as opposed to just my uh, CFD renderings. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we those ceiling fans have adjustable speeds and so they uh, you know ensure occupancy com comfort on hot, still, humid days. Uh, you'll also see on the right bottom uh, image, uh, I, you have to actually strain to see it, but there's retractable automatic retractable mesh screens. Uh, which allow us to um, have some protection from the wind and rain, but you can see that they're fairly transparent. And that actually goes through the entire uh, perimeter of the restaurant. So just simple, you know, uh, things that helped us uh, keep this building um, without AC and yet comfortable. Um, the roof is very well insulated to keep the heat out. And then we also have um, like a, a space between, uh, we have scissor trust roofs. And so we have space in between that, uh, you know, um, where, where the, um, I should say, 
any heat that gets into that air gap then uh, escapes naturally through the gable end louvered areas. Uh, so it allows to eliminate any heat buildup or transfer into the dining areas below. So that allows us to keep the cooler temperature. Um, I, I do want to see that slide one more time because I want to talk about trees. Um, so our, our client, you know, he loves trees and he, gen he genuinely wanted to save every tree. So we've maintained most of the trees and we located, relocated a few trees. And however, you know, so that way we were able to um, keep the embodied carbon within the life, life cycle of the tree. Um, and so that reduces the air conditioning load. Um, but we, what trees couldn't be saved, and this is really quite special, they were reclaimed and then they were crafted into live edge tables. And so you'll see in the top right image, uh, the, the hotel staff actually did those tables. So if you're ever there, you should appreciate those. Um, another benefit to having trees um, and all the native landscaping around the restaurant is it also helps cool the surrounding areas and it reduces the urban heat island effects and again reduces the, the need for mechanical cooling systems in the restaurant area. The kitchen um, had to be enclosed and air conditioned um, and that those are, you know, Department of Health regulations, but we did provide continuous insulation behind the metal cladding. And again, that along with the eaves helped cut down the heat gain and reduce, help reduce the cooling loads. Um, Kevin, did you want to add anything on that slide or? Yeah, can we go back to it? One thing, one great thing about that, you're talking about how open it is, most places you could you're really only open on maybe one or two sides here, but really here we're open on almost four sides completely. There's just the kitchen in the back area that would be blocking the uh, the trade wings coming through. So this is really cent centralized in that courtyard and the trade winds can come through and then it just lets the heat dissipate out of the space. It never really builds up because you can, you can go right through from one side of the building to the other side of the building because it's it's open all around it's it's almost exactly like a, a wide brim hat because you have those large overhangs not letting any of that radiant heat get into the into the space unless it's really late in the evening well even even late in the evening early in the morning you have the the building that the main structures that are uh, a couple hundred feet away preventing that so you really don't get any direct radiant light in heat into it and then you also have nice air movement through the space. And I, I'll add, I, I could point out, if you see that section below, sorry, we need the slide again. But uh, that section is cut through the building uh, on the Malka side. And you can see that basically it, it looks straight through the building uh, towards the ocean. And you can see the canoe underneath for the canoe hale on the, on the right side of the building. So, okay, so the next slide then. All right, so I wanted to leave everybody with this um, slide. Um, we uh, this is a picture like looking at the restaurant, the the bar on the inside underneath the the roof, and then the outdoor bar area, uh, and then you know looking towards the ocean. Um, we think, I mean, it it kind of captures the essence of uh, our project, and I just want to say that one of the things that we appreciate is um, our owner did tell us that the guests love the hui hui. In fact, they kind of tend to linger. And uh, hopefully this slide tells you a li little bit of why. I mean, I think it, it's great views, but it's also very comfortable to be in that space. So I think with that, I will transition to Kevin so he can illustrate measures that they took on their end with mechanical electrical fighting plumbing, et cetera. Thank you, Pranima. Yeah, my slides are not gonna be quite as uh, visually appealing as, as Pranima's slides, but they'll, get, they'll show the picture of what we're trying to accomplish here, um, mechanically plumbing wise to, to save energy. So this first slide here, uh, one thing we had to consider here, this, this building was located right in the center of the courtyard. So guests were looking down on this building in every direction. So 
we had to find a way to provide hot water heating and also provide air conditioning without having unsightly, well, some people have called them unsightly mechanical equipment around it on the roof or on the, on the site. So uh, we, there's this opportunity here. We had a, a, a somewhat decent sized mechanical room on the, in the lower level provided by the architect. And we, we figured, okay, if we provide heat pumps to heat the hot water and then provide air cool condensed units through a BRF system, the air conditioner property, we can locate both of them inside the, the uh, basement. And they also, they'll work somewhat congruently because heat pumps want this space to be hot and they'll, they'll reject the, um, they'll reject cool because they'll be taking hot, they've taken the coolness of the, the water to make create hot water. And then the air cool condensing units want a cool space. And then they'll take that cool air and pull it out of the space and blow it outside. So if you can look at the, the slide there and right, here's a picture. There's a heat pumps located in the, in the basement. You have louvers pulling air in, the hot air in. So heat pumps pull air, the hot air in, reject it out the front of the face of it and blow it right to the condensing units that are right next to it. And that those will pull in that cold air and then push that hot air out louvers into the, the Mackay side of the building. So those two are working concurrently. So it'll be a, a warmer space for the, the heat pumps and then it'll cool down and then create cool air for the condensing units. So if we go to the next slide, you can see how uh, people can read it. Yeah, it's, it's legible right there. So on the left side is the air cooled condensing unit efficiencies. So if you can see when it's, 100 degrees outside, the total cooling capacity is like 13.9, and then the power input is 1.29 kW. So this is a general, generally how air cooling condensing units work. And then if you go to, if it's 70 degrees, the total cooling capacity is 15, and the power input is 1.03. So it's much more efficient for a lot more cooling when the space is cooler. And then on the right side is the, the heat pump efficiency. So you can see when it is hotter outside, the heat pump, the coefficient performance is much greater than when it's cooler outside. So it just, so with those two things working together and, and within a restaurant, the times when you're going to be air conditioning modes, midday, uh, and then we were serving lunchtime early evening when you're serving dinner, you'll have a a lot of air conditioner required in the kitchen. And then that will combine with, okay, you need a lot of hot water at the kitchen as well. And they work hand in hand. Ideally, there's different ways to do it where you can like put a, a heat pump, which uses hot water and, and makes cooling. But with how small this building was, we couldn't put that type of system in because you need a larger storage tank. It's a, it's a more robust system. so. For how small the space we had and the budget there, this we felt was the most economical way to achieve that symmetry with the cooling and heating. And also to be able to find a system that met the aesthetics of the space and or of the building and didn't have uh, unsightly equipment surrounding the building where that guests could be walking by and seeing from their rooms. All the lanai's looked down towards this, this Hui Hui restaurant and also at the roof too, so we couldn't even locate anything on the roof. That made challenges with the kitchen exhaust equipment, trying to locate everything in the, the attic space and uh, sound issues. So we had to have acoustical louvers, but yeah. Locating some uh, a building right in the middle of a courtyard that every guest looks down makes it very difficult to, to provide a, an easily maintainable uh, mechanical and plumbing system. So, we want to go to the next slide. So we talked a lot about how the it was an open floor plan for the, the dining and the there's no walls anywhere really, so you have nice air movement. But we all know many times during the year, and it's even getting worse now, that the trade winds are almost non-existent. So to 
I dress those very still days, Kona, Kona days. We put numerous ceiling fans throughout the, uh, the dining area. And to optimize the location, we use CFD modeling to make sure we didn't have too many ceiling fans and waste money and also energy and also too little where you do, you're not providing much benefit with air movement. So one thing about ceiling fans, typically uh, in a, a dining area, we're trying to be within 50 to 100 feet per minute air velocity, maybe a little up to 150, because the cooling effect you'll get there is three to six degree temperature reduction with additional air movement. So if it's 80 degrees, 85 degrees, it'll feel like it's 80, 78 degrees with the extra additional air movement. So we use, in this project, we use big ass fans. I'm sure everyone is familiar with them. They have the greatest marketing strategy with that name. <laughs> and, and if you go back to that CFD modeling, we are able to locate them. If you look on there, in the yellow and green and light blue, that's 40 to about 100 feet per minute velocity. So right where the it's really dark blue, that's where the center of the ceiling fan is. You have higher air velocities there, but then as it goes down, this one we took at 62 inches off the floor level. We also did it at four inches off the floor level, and we also and also at 48 inches. So just different heights. We compared and like okay, and then work with the work with Pernima and found out optimal pit placement of these ceiling fans to not have too many. To work with the aesthetics and not have too little, and we felt we we had it with this layout right here. We're able to get good air movement. Typically, about three to five degree uh, cooling effect from the fans, fifty to hundred feet per minute air velocity. Not too much where it's blowing your napkins off your plate but not, not too little where there's negligible effect. Also, if you can see in there, there's a, there's a private dining area that if you have a large group, they want to be able to air condition that as well. So we have AC in that, in that private dining, but the rest of it was all uh, naturally ventilated and cooled with ceiling fans. So like, yeah. just like- yeah. I can add. Okay, go for it. Uh, yeah, the PDR or the private dining room is uh, air conditioned, but we also have doors that it, it can completely slide out so it can be totally transparent. And yeah, my understanding is that many of the time they, they, there's these large, large doors that they just slide them open and they just act, have it naturally ventilated in there as well. And there's another ceiling fan in there to provide additional air movement to keep it cool. And then Oh, so one thing, another thing with the heat pumps for the hot water heating, those are electric based. So we do not have any gas usage to do any hot water, which also helps us get to our 2045 goal of eliminating the use of fossil fuel on Hawaii. But pretty much all hot water heating in the future is gonna have to either be with solar hot water or with heat pump hot water heating without gas because yeah that's obviously gas is a fossil fuel and yeah, one other ready. aspect if we go to the final slide uh, yeah, we have to wrap it up pretty quickly kevin the the, the uh pv on on the property so Conopoly was already doing a great job with adding with pv and as part of this project this whole renovation project we even added more pv so so the property has about 600 kW of peak demand, and, and currently with the PV on site, they are about 213 kW of power generated. So about a third of the, the power on the property is being generated from PVs and utilizing heat pump water heating that works hand in hand with PV being generated on site. The so Compound Beach Hotel is doing a wonderful job of trying to meet our sustainability goals. And they're very much uh, contributing to Hawaii becoming the paradise of uh, clean energy. And we are out of time. So Kevin and Purnima, thank you so very, very much. Hopefully 
your project will be an inspiration to one and all, and we will be galloping towards 100% clean energy in the near future. Again, thank you so very much. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.